Now, what about the large scale migrations in general? They have two options. They can use Azure Express Route. Um, that's going to create a sort of a VPN or a secure tunnel between Office 365 and on premises. So that is ideal when you don't want to kind of have the impact of the internet and everything else that goes along that though everything is always secured when you migrate this actually really creates that express route between the tenant and your on-premises you can also ship your disks but it comes with a lot of work in terms of packaging your disk at the source still you still have to create the packages that I was talking about uh, the the migration packages and then shipping your disk so it's not as simple as you know creating a backup of your database putting in a disk and sending it to Microsoft you also have to take into consideration the time in between sending the disk mounting it and running and what about what's been happening on premises how are you going to do that incremental migration but this shipping is also a possibility one thing that people always ask me is the speed of migration. And unfortunately, there's no real way to calculate this. If you're doing an on-premises migration, of course, database attached is going to take quite um, uh, a few. <clears throat> Sorry, it's going to be quite quick. However, um, there are going to be impacts even with the database attached. So you have to be careful when you're patching your servers at the destination because once you mount that database, it's going to apply all of the patches on all your content database. So there are tips and tricks so that it is already patched before you can bring your database over to the destination. Because sometimes the database attached even can take hours, sometimes a day to be able to upgrade itself to the destination. So take that into consideration and take into consideration that people are still working at the source during that time find your bottlenecks most people don't realize that their bandwidth is a huge problem right if you're migrating to another server or you're migrating online uh, especially online if your upload you know megabit speed is not up to par and I see this too frequently unfortunately People migrate into Office 65 and don't realize that their bandwidth, their internet speed is going to have a direct impact on how they work, both download speed and upload speed. So identify your bottleneck. Look, there's a way to analyze your bandwidth internally in your network. Do you have network people that can see the availability of your bandwidth on a given day so that you can see whether or not there's enough bandwidth to start migrating gigs and terabytes of data through that network? Are you going to impact your, your end users for the rest of their work? Or should you plan it during the weekend where you have more available bandwidth or evenings, right? Or just improve the overall network internally. You want to automate, you want to script, scheduling, set the expectations, type of data, number of metadata, right? The speed of the migration is going to be directly impact, uh, be impacted by the number of metadata that you have and the number of versions that you have. I cannot tell you how fast your list is going to migrate or your library is going to migrate unless you tell me how much versioning there is on each document and how many columns there is because that instantly and exponentially grows the migration speed. The best for you to do is set a benchmark test. Right. Create yourself a fake Microsoft Office 5 tenant. If you're a Microsoft partner, there's demos dot. Um, I think it's Microsoft Office dot com where you can create or generate a fake environment for Office 365 and test your migration speed with the data that you have currently, the number of columns, the versioning. So you can set speed expectations uh, for the overall uh, migration because you'll always want to set milestones for all of this make sure you identify your migration waves and the schedules what I was just talking about to minimize the read-only time usually what I do is um, as, after I started migrating the site collection from on-prem to online or on-prem to the other SharePoint server 2016 then Microsoft has a way, uh, SharePoint has a way to set your site collections as read only. So people can still access the data, but cannot save anything new. They'll have to go to the new location to save, right? Use the holidays to your advantage if you actually want to spend your holidays there. 
post migration run post migration reports usually what i do is i create a, a post migration report for each of the content owners right remember the inventory that we created earlier with the assessment you have a column that is who is the content owner for that and then i'm going to send them a migration report for each piece that i migrated here's what it is now here's the permissions that are assigned now to make sure that they can validate that as well it's not just about the content migrated and make sure that there's the exact same amount of documents so they can see the number of documents and items before the number of documents and items after as well um, redirect your users, uh, whether you're doing link redirects with IIS, whether you're doing warning banners, that means you change the master page in SharePoint that gives a big banner at the top so that everyone knows that they're in an environment that's no longer good, that's no longer going to be updated with a hyperlink to the new destination. Change your file shares to read only if you're doing a file share migration. Source read only with a link or visual to the new location. Communication, make sure that there's a hard stop deadline. If you said that you're going to be done by this date, you're done by this date. If you start doing, oh, okay, I'll add it a little bit, you'll never do your migration successfully. Um, obviously, there's tons of my, uh, communication that you have to do. Here's my tip. Pretend that you're in a mall and you're the owner of this coffee shop or you have your own little store in the mall. This is your existing SharePoint server and you want to migrate to the destination. You want to go to another store. You're moving in the mall. You're going to another location because it's bigger, because it's better located, because of X amount of things. This is why you're going to the next version of SharePoint. Think of everything that you would do for your store in the mall. Would you overnight close down your shop and open up somewhere else and hopefully the customers would know where it is no you've seen this many times there's tons of announcements before we're gonna move soon when you're building at the new location you put a sign up coming soon and it's gonna be better because of this because of that because of this right you're going to have influencers, right? The person at the cashier that's going to tell you, hey, here's a coupon. When we go to the new destination, you'll get 25% off. Things like this to spread the message, to communicate. So pretend that you're a store in a mall that's going to a new location in a mall. Everything that you would do to announce the destination, whether it's at the new destination, whether it's within the old store, what would you do? Would you put banners up? Would you put things on the wall? Then why are there not banners on your team site? Why not add a new item in the quick launch of every single site collection that shows a link to the new destination that when you get to the destination, it's a wonderful page that sh explains what's happening. What are they going to be? What are the benefits from this change? What are the end users going to gain from going to the destination? Right? So basically communication constantly throughout the whole migration project, whether it's during the um, RMR process, the remove, migrate or rebuild, the inventory and assessment, the planning of it, the post migration.